In Nazi Germany, the NSDAP party had a youth wing, the Hitler Youth. It consisted of boys from 14 to 18 years old. The Nazis sought to raise a replacement for themselves, fanatically devoted to the idea of National Socialism. The members of the Hitler Youth were taught to survive in difficult conditions, endure hardships and not to feel pity for the enemies of the Reich. In a word, young Nazis were supposed to become true Aryans in the understanding of the Nazi elite. Children from Deutsche Janvolk raised their right hands in the Nazi salute. Nuremberg, 1934 the Hitler Youth concentrated all the youth movements that existed in Germany, and the Janvolk took care of teenagers between the ages of 10 and 14. The youth of Hitler Germany, Hitler's children, were taught to unquestioningly and diligently carry out the task assigned by their elders, and to always be ready to risk themselves for the sake of the Fuhrer and the Reich. In the midst of the Second World War, the question arose of involving the older members of the Hitler Youth in direct combat operations, and the creation of the SS Panzer Division Hitler Youth. Himmler warmly supported this idea, and after the summer of 1943, the issue of recruiting German youth to participate in hostilities was finally resolved. German youth were intensively prepared for service in tank and mechanized units, assault troops, in the Luftwaffe, in the Navy, and in the rear units of the SS to guard prisoners in the concentration camps. In this regard, at the beginning of the 30s, Hitler addressing German parents said the following, Your child already belongs to us today. And you? You haven't made up your mind yet, but your offspring are already in our camp. The children of the 30s and the youth of the 40s indeed belonged to the Nazi elite in Germany and sacrificed their lives for its sake. In 1944-1945, German children began to be especially actively involved in hostilities. More and more often, in military units one could meet 14-16 year old youth and even 11-12 year old children. Such German youth were Heinz Petri and his two comrades, Joseph Schoner and another youngster who remained unknown. These young men, like all German children of Hitler's Germany, attended school and were members of the Hitler Youth. It is clear that all their thoughts were connected with the cult of Hitler, National Socialism and the desire to perform feats in the name of the nation and the Great Reich. The boys' brains from the childhood were brainwashed by the misanthropic ideology of racial superiority of the German nation. Little is known about these young Nazis, like hundreds of thousands of others. Heinz Petri seemed to be a good student and a diligent boy. This also could be said of many, many German children of that time. Very young Germans, in fact still children, became the last reserve of the Nazi leadership clinging to the power to the last and sending the future of Germany into the furnace of war. So, Heinz Petri was a typical German boy from the Hitler Youth. Of course, Hitler Youth units could not change the course of war. However, in some places they caused a lot of trouble. Thus, a certain Albert Czech, already at the age of 12, was awarded the Iron Cross by Hitler himself. After that, he fought for another month. Czech was lucky, he was captured and survived. Other guys from the Hitler Youth were much less fortunate. Heinz Petri from the town of Yudiskorchin was not so lucky. Already at the very end of the war, according to some sources, at the end of February, according to others, at the end of March, received the task of sneaking behind the lines of American troops and using a radio hidden in a certain place to direct Wehrmacht artillery at American units. According to legend, explosives were also hidden along with the radio, apparently to carry out sabotage in the American rear. The guys walked through the forest to the area of the city of Bregen. An American military unit was located there. The guys wandered around, apparently in search of a radio and ammunition, until they ran into an American patrol. They were detained. Here the data again is contradictory. If the young SS men were taken in February March, then why did it take so long to decide their fate? Until May. Here is worth admitting that many such boys did things that were quite adult and even scary. From the memoirs of Lieutenant Colonel of the United Anglo-Canadian Army Robert Daniel, who spoke about the liberation of the Bergen-Besland concentration camp. I heard the pop of shots and went to the fence. There were four young SS men standing there, most likely from the Hitler Youth. They were shooting at the still-living people lying between the corpses, finishing them off. 
At the same time, they tried to hit both men and women in the crotch in order to cause more torture. I shot three of them and the fourth ran away. Many veterans recalled how their tanks were burned by boys from the Hitler Youth, how sniper brats shot at passing units in the back. Like young Nazis, they mined roads and did many other dirty tricks. They were truly the fewer loyal soldiers. In general, there are few documents testifying to the crimes committed by members of the Hitler Youth. There are also few memoirs of them from veterans of the countries of the anti-Hitler coalition. However, let's return to the young SS members, including Heinz Petri. The youngest of them, whose name remained unknown to us, managed to escape. In all likelihood, they were not very guarded at the beginning. This fact confirms the version that these young fascists didn't seem to the American military to be any dangerous criminals. In May 1945, after the end of hostilities in Europe and the surrender of Germany, the military tribunal of the 9th American Army sentenced the remaining two youth Heinz Petrie, 16-year-old, and Joseph Schoner, 17-year-old, to death. The president of the tribunal stated the following. Responsibility for the fate of these two boys lies with the Nazi leaders, and it was they who sent them to their death. The German military and political leaders force us to fight fire with fire and blood with blood. We will not allow the guilty to hide behind women and children. Heinz Petrie and Joseph Schoner were convicted and executed on June 1, 1945. For reference, these two photos and videos on the internet are often presented as the execution of Heinz Petrie and his comrade. In fact, these are photos of the execution of unknown people by an American firing squad, taken from an English magazine. Probably Heinz and Joseph were executed in the same way, therefore we use these materials for illustration. <laughs> 